Welcome back, you guys, to the Millennial Classics with Burry and Q. On this podcast, we talk about the best and most memorable movies, music, and culture-changing events from our generation. Um, Burry, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. We are, I mean, we're watching Rush Hour 2, so... Exactly. Good. It's a very good day to talk about this very good movie. Burry, since you already told the folks what movie we're doing, why don't you tell them why is this movie a millennial classic? Fall down by the day. What are you talking about? Ah! I don't like my chickens live, okay? I like them dead, deep fried. You ever heard of Popeyes? I want to show him a good time. Hong Kong style. You get a massage from Chinese girl before? Oh, I got to add out. Oh, let me get her. Her in the black. Her in the pink. Hey, baby. Hurry up. Man, what's wrong with you? You don't jump in front of a black man in a buffet line? <laughs> Lee. What? Now I'm on vacation. I don't know him. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. God, uh, All y'all look alike. So this is a millennial classic because one, it's an, it's an amazing movie, right? Yes. And here's the thing that I like. I want to get through, which is very important. These type of movies aren't this good anymore. These buddy cop movies. Have been getting worse and worse as time goes on, and our, we're lucky our generation has a couple good ones. That's okay. what I'm saying. Because okay. the younger generation, they got to deal with Kevin Hart. <laughs> and that's it. Well, what do you think about? Uh, I thought um, Hobbs and Shaw was fantastic. You, you're comparing Rush Hour to the Hobbs. I know. But what, what? Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. And I, I think your point is obviously true. You, what you It's objectively true. But do you think it's because we've seen everything that you could do in a buddy cop movie? Where else can you go? Like, what else no, can I you mean, do? No, I mean, all right, there's one that I would put better than this one, which is Nice From Guys. From the newer generation? Wait, yeah, oh, the Nice Guys. The nice Guys. Okay. Which is, and that's which uh, is, Russell Crowe and, uh, um, and Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Very good movie. Very, very good movie. So, I agree. But this, like, I don't know. This, all right, so we'll just come but up that movie, But no, but that movie... Um, the nice guys is a lot more action than it is comedy. This movie is so much funnier. Yeah. This movie yeah. is so much funny. This and is I, so yeah. I will say this movie. Okay, it's yeah, it's worse than Rush Hour One. We can admit it. All right. We can <laughs> straight admit out it. the it's, gate. It's straight out the gate. <laughs> it's like, but it's still like it's like it's like saying uh this movie's like saying like Joe Biden's the second best president of the 21st century. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, there's really not much competition. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Really. So it's it's a good movie. It's funny. And the thing with this movie is, if you like Jackie Chan, you like this movie. If you like Chris Tucker, you I like love this, this movie. movie. <laughs> like, like, that's it. It's just ISO ball with two guys. That's yeah, but, it. And it's also the thing that's really important about this movie. Yes, it's a buddy cop movie, but it holds up so well as a sequel to Rush Hour. Yes, of course, Rush Hour is better, but it holds up so well as a sequel. It does that thing where it starts off like right after yes. the last one, exactly, which is always a good thing. And I thought they were going to do it again because it ends and it's like, yo, you want to go to New York, Madison Square Garden, some Mushu? And I was like, yo, that would have been a sick movie. I forget how Rush Hour 3 starts. I really do. I, I forget a lot about Rush Hour 3. Maybe for the better, but you know. They all, they all gained, everyone's gained like 20 pounds except for Jackie Chan. <laughs> no, no, not all. Just Chris Tucker. And he Just grew. Chris Tucker. <laughs> I was being nice. But yeah, no, uh, do you, uh, this is 2001, you guys. The movie came out August 3rd, 2001. Do you remember um, uh, when the movie came out? Do you remember going to the theaters? Do you remember what happened? Do you remember who you watched this with? Or is just this another movie you watched as a DVD? No, I would have been like six, seven. Yeah. Actually, I would have been a first year in America type deal for me. Oh, there you so, go. There so you go. This, this would not have been a priority. Uh, <laughs> I hear you. Um, I remember Rush Hour 1 being such a big deal for my family excuse me, my family, when um, it first came out, it was a huge, huge deal for us. We love Jackie Chan. We thought Chris Tucker was absolutely hilarious um, after watching the movie because Rush Hour was our introduction into to Chris Tucker. So when Rush Hour 2 came out, I remember my entire family being on board, ready, hook, line, and sinker. We're ready to go watch this movie. I don't know if we watch it in theaters because you're right, we were so young, but I do remember watching it with the crew, all of my siblings and maybe even a few of my cousins. Um, 
such a blast because this movie is so funny because Mm -hmm. Chris Tucker is so funny. This is such a good time to watch with other folks just cackling your ass off. And yeah, now in 2022, we'll talk about it. It, I mean, I mean, a lot of Chris Tucker's lines are just straight racist. I mean, it's like, and then Dragon (laughs) Chan tries to throw some racist ones back, and I'm always like, yo, Jackie, you can do better. Yeah, he he can't hang, but that's not his, that's not his lane. So you definitely, definitely respect it. Speaking of the past, um, before we get into the movie, why don't you jump with me into the millennial time machine so I can tell you what was going on on August 3rd, 2001. Burry and I were seven to eight years old at the time. The date, August 3rd, 2001. And it's a Friday. The song Bootylicious by Destiny's Child is on top of the single charge. George W. Bush Jr. is currently the president of the United States and the movie This millennial classic, Rush Hour 2, is at the top of the box office. The Nokia 3310 is one of the most popular cell phones out at the time. This, like, saying that sounds insane. That's saying that sounds... We don't even know the word Nokia anymore. (laughs) For real. I mean, that just sounds insane. And the fact that you... Or Destiny's Child. (laughs) Well, stop. Beyonce just dropped some fire. Well, I don't know. We'll talk. Um, On TV... That's not going to be a millennial classic. I can tell you that. Oh, 100% not. Um, most popular stuff. Yep. On TV, people are watching popular shows such as, I haven't even heard of this, Ally McBeal, Angel, Malcolm in the Middle, and Boston Public. Every time I see Boston Pub- Public, Burry, it's on all of these lists of like best shows and most watched shows and m- what are millennial and shows. shows when Burry is never going to watch. That's what I'm saying. I've never, I don't think I've seen a single episode. I don't even know what that show is. I know. Okay? I think William Shatner's in it. But that's well, good for him. Um, gamers are playing titles such as Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, WWF No Mercy, and RuneScape. Um, Mumbury, so when I was going through the history, the Millennial Time Machine, it, like we've done so many movies around the same years. So I have to I have to whittle it down to the month now. And I know this is impossibly hard to ask you. I don't even know if you want me. I could just list off the, the top five. But is there any way you can guess the top five domestic grossing movies of August 2001? Is that even a real question August, I can ask? August. It's just the summer Harry, blockbusters Harry, of that Harry, year. Harry Potter came out in uh, Christmas that year, right? Yeah, I, I think they usually come out on Christmas, so it wasn't even same out. with Lord of the Rings. Was there an X-Men movie that came out in August? Um, I guess. I mean, it depends on if you want to call this an action. It's more like... I said X-Men. Oh, X-Men. No, 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 no. All right, then I'm out. Yeah. So let me just go down the list because every time we do these th- this list, it's going to be the same list on, 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 unless I get it a little, whittle it down and uh, make it a little bit more specific. So we'll go from backwards. Number five was The Others. Number four, Planet of the Apes. Number three, Prin- The Princess Diaries. Number two, American Pie 2. That blows my mind. I feel like American Pie was a lot older. I thought it would be uh, uh, like Dude, American Pie like 4 that. or like the band camp or whatever. And then number one was Rush Hour 2. Um, those are the top five grossing movies domestically. What a bad month for movies. It, it really was. I mean, outside of Rush Hour 2. Dude, Mark and- Wahlberg's been in some stinkers from the jump, bro. Thank you. <laughs> Jurassic, Park, Jurassic Park 3 was number six that uh, in, uh, that month. Legally Blonde was number nine. So they were movies that year. It was just... All right, so Legally Blonde's probably the best movie. On that list? Um, yeah. You think so? Yeah. What, what about The Planet of the Apes? That movie, have you seen it? It's actually terrible. What do you mean? I thought it was like uh, critically acclaimed and everything. That's the new ones. That's the ones that came out in like 2012 Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 you're right, you're right. This, this Planet is- of the Apes <laughs> is, like killed the franchise for 10 years. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg honestly might have the best agent in in the in the history of agents. Why do you say Kill that? It. The amount of bombs he's in and he just keeps coming back, bro. Whew. Listen, you got to do what you got to. I mean, he's also the producer, right? Or the director? Not the director. The he's producer something. of he's the Entourage, something. right? So like, oh, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. he's just always in the business. He's uh, and like, yeah, two, in the early two thousands, Entourage was like the biggest show and. The biggest show. It was just huge. All right, Mumbari, the makings and ratings of Rush Hour 2 take us. All right. Um, so a lot of this stuff's gonna be the same as Rush Hour One. Yep. Brett Ratner, director, the less said about him, the better. Mm-hmm. Uh <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> you guys can oh, look man. that shit up. You guys can look that shit up yourself. <laughs> but uh, he's in the Kevin Spacey zone. I'll say that. Oh, uh, box office, huge, huge. Like action comedies don't make this much money anymore. Yep. Three forty-seven million worldwide in two thousand one. That's like crazy, crazy. Budget's ninety million, so we know That's where huge. most of That's that amazing. money went. Yep. Into Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan's pockets. Of course. Um, and they deserved it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. They deserved it. Rotten Tomatoes fifty-two percent. Oh damn. Um, six point six out of ten on IMDb. So this is the this is the thing. This Can, movie. I, I always. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. 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 Go ahead. This movie, it's it's one of those classic sequels where if you like the first one a lot, you'll, you'll actually be excited for the second one. If you just see this movie without seeing the first movie, you'll be like, I don't know, that was movie is okay. But okay. if you've seen the first one, you actually get hyped for it. Yeah. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean, the sequels, I guess, are the same way. Like You watch the first one, you really like it. It's a really good movie. The sequels are worse. But if you've seen the first one and you really fuck with it and you like the characters and you like Jack Sparrow, then you'll be around for the second and third, even if they're worse. You even know what I'm saying? Worse. Okay. Um, I have to ask, uh, maybe maybe like Harry Potter is not a good like way to compare because it's like generationally great, but like, and you have to follow the story along. Anyways, that's a sidetrack. What I wanted to ask, do you agree with those ratings? Do you think that they were right? A 52%? Maburi, that's, I feel like that's a little harsh. It's an action comedy. Well, I mean, what are you judging this base, like, compared to? I will say, um, I feel no. like that's low balling it real right. bad. It's, I think it's about right. Because you think about it, like, all right, I was shitting on our generation a little bit earlier, and I think this is better than almost all the Kevin Hart buddy cop movies, like Ride Along and... What I can't what that the CEO um, with the CIA the, or whatever, Central yeah, Intelligence in, or whatever. Exactly, Central Intelligence. But, but 21 Jump Street is better than this movie. Oh, 100%. 22 Jump Street is better than this movie. The Nice no, Guys. Maybe 21, not 22. I wasn't a big fan of 22. The Nice Guys, 100%. So I don't agree with that. You, you, I think this movie is good, but if you actually like take a step back and think about the plot, <laughs> you start being like <laughs> the amount of actual cop work being done in this movie is almost zero. First off, the Hong Kong Hong Kong police, besides the fact that they just let anybody like I can't walk into the post office and go behind the counter. These yeah. motherfuckers are delivering packages like <laughs> into the detective's fucking desk. Random person just walks in. Besides all that, we can ignore all that. The simple fact that the the cop work being done in Hong Kong is pretty much the bad guys here just go there and see what happens. <laughs> I mean, All right. They, Look, you can't shit they that do much. That twice. They, they do, do that you, twice. Okay. So, Mumbari, let me ask you this. What did they do differently in LA once they got here? It's the same thing in the entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the one thing that happens in LA is they do a little bit of cop, cop work, as in they shake down an informant, get okay. a clue. Yeah. Yeah. Follow okay. that clue, do surveillance. Yeah. Okay, you're right. You're right. There's a little bit more legwork, but it does a little bit. It's still almost nothing. It's literally because you're right. In Hong Kong, it's literally uh, 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 Ricky Tantier. We're going there. (laughs) Ricky Tantier. We're going there. (laughs) And then they they don't don't even do anything. They just walk up to Ricky Tan. It's like, hey, yo, Ricky Tan. Don't say they. It's Chris Tucker. It's James Carter who walks up to Ricky Tan. Hey, yo, come on. We gotta go. (laughs) I love it. No, um, this is a perfect uh, segue because you're right. Uh, let's talk about those fucking cop work that's going on in this movie. Let's talk about the actual scenes in the movie. Mumbari, the best scenes in the movie. Go down the list. Take us on this journey through Rush Hour 2. Um, so my worst, the worst uh, scene I have is uh, the first one. Oh, this is, a, this, is, this is a little bit of a flip, starting out with the worst. But yeah, it's the first scene, so why not? Uh, you mean like just the intro, like the big bomb? Intro. Or, well, or I like you- the, yeah, I like the, the intro music, obviously, is dope. Honestly, yep. the music's way better than, than it needs to be. The bomb intro is played out at this point, starting with the bomb going off because it, it almost like, all right, they do three throwaway lines about how this bomb went off to American style. Like, first off, the implication 
being that Carter does not give a fuck about a bomb going off unless two Americans died is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you heard what like, he said. A dude. bomb went off. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Two Americans died. Oh, shit. You think? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, right before that, he's like, there's two billion Asians. You pick one of them as your partner. <laughs> uh, I just think, and it's first off, they straight up copy that intro from Die Hard 3, Die Hard with a Vengeance, which is a goat movie but it starts off with a bomb and then yeah. you meet the you meet the char- main character the yeah. hero this yeah. starts the exact same way except that i just it just don't care bro and it's also such a small bomb if you're gonna go big go big go dude. big just especially yeah bomb. because they do the they do the bombs three times in this movie that first bomb you're right it's not big enough for yeah, you to like a, start a movie with that's it's some like, shit if you tell someone uh, i went to home depot and made a fertilizer bomb that's what I'm picturing right there. Yeah, this is something. Like you're nice a backyard to... terrorist. You're not. This is not. You're not moving big. You're not moving with the. We're talking big about fit. DIY DIY yeah. terrorists. That's some shit you find on Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> you got bad. You went on Reddit. You went to Ace Hardware. You didn't even go to Home Depot. You didn't even go for the big shit. You went to Ace Hardware. <laughs> you try to fit everything that can fit in your Honda Civic. That's what. Yes. You, that's, yeah. You you didn't rent the truck. Um. So, um and 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 and. Uh, because it's a sequel, you have to compare it to the uh, Rush Hour One. And Rush Hour One's intro was so mm-hmm. good with the so good with with that blonde Asian dude. Is just like it's Rush Hour. What are you What are you talking about? So yes, no, I, but even not even that. Remember Carter pulls in, and then and then they have that intro, and then the Carter's intro where they he blows up the car full oh, of yeah. C four in the middle better, of L A. Exactly, exactly. And then you go to this fucking tiny bomb going off. Yeah. So so what what do you think about do you consider the, so just the bomb scene is what you don't like you think it's the worst yeah. scene and I might agree yeah. with you I literally had no worst scene because I thought like all the bad scenes were super quick but I I can agree with you on that it was a shitty intro um but you don't carry that into the intro into um Lee and Carter no no, no cuz that's a good scene that's exactly scene. exactly I was about to say I actually really enjoy that scene okay so keep going please so then we got the MJ club scene, the Chris Tucker show, pretty much. It's yeah. just, it's honestly just like put the camera on Chris Tucker and make see him what earn happens. his fucking $20 million paycheck. Yeah. That's it. That's um, literally it. I, I, I do wonder if, are, were people really fucking with the Beach Boys like that? Uh, uh, of course they were. I mean, you, the, fact that, the fact that you know the Beach Boys says that they were. Right? I know the Beach Boys the same way I know who fucking. But Lionel know, Richie the Eagles is. are. Who are the Eagles? But the thing is, yeah, you might not like their music, even if you were around at that time. But the fact that you know it means that they were big enough for it to carry over. Of course, someone was fucking with the Beach Boys. Of course they were. But in 99, in 2001, they were so fucking with the Beach Boys, listening to them on the riff fucking radio. Yeah, no, probably not. I hope not. I, yeah, those girls should drive away. If you a, a, man, a man from <laughs> Hong Kong and a man from LA were vibing to the Beach Boys. Like like it's 1965, wherever the fuck the Beach Boys were hot. <laughs> um, I agree with you. I was uh, it, it's the 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 song that they danced to and was doing the training scene in Rush Hour One. Um, I don't know war. the <laughs> exactly the wars. It was just that was a banger. You you yeah. understood that, but mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't give them that hard of a time. Yeah. Chris Tucker did throw the CD out the window, right? Yeah, you know what they if they had done like the Drake wants and needs with little baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been some heat. Yeah, I'm sure in 2001. Um, but yeah, um, um, that scene before we amazing, move, a, a great scene. They go into there. Um, Chris Tucker always needs his Michael Jackson mm-hmm. uh, flowers in every movie. Well, not maybe every movie, but all the Rush Hour movies. He and, does the um, the Michael Jackson music video a month after this movie, which oh, is the real? best music video. It's the best. It's the best Michael Jackson song. No, it's, it's the best. Not. Best music video. No, Chris Tucker, Michael you're, Jackson. You're insane for saying that. Marlon Brando's in the vi- music video. You're insane but, for saying that. You're insane but, for saying that. But go ahead. But Chris Tucker in this with the funny lines. Get the triad. I want the triads and the ugly girls over here. <laughs> the hot women over there. <laughs> I mean, this is a dude that literally thinks about fucking before any police work is done. Can you? No, but this is not his fault. Because he wasn't. No, 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 no. I know, but I'm talking about throughout the movie. Oh, even okay. at the yes. end of the movie, they're at the Red Dragon. They're supposed to be undercover. 
he sees Lee talking with a, uh, a woman and he's like, yo, she got any friends? <laughs> he gets mad at him for two seconds and he's like, hey, she got any friends? She got any friends? What's uh, But uh, he, I'll kill with the killer lines. Lee, I'm like a god to these people. <laughs> uh, it's, safe. Oh. it's safe to say something like that. I love when they walk in and he's like, act like a tourist. Oh, was that at the seat? No, well, he's like, blend in. And he's like, I am a black man. And he's <laughs> no, like, he's like, I'm two feet taller than everybody. Yes. I love it. He's like, I'm two feet tall than everyone here. I can't blend it. Are you crazy? When he's yelling Chamal Lee like five times in a row, gets me every time. Chamal Lee. Chamal. It's, come on. Yeah, it's a, it's a great scene. It's an absolutely great scene. I really, really enjoy that scene. Um, <clears throat> But it, it is James Carr. He really is. And I know we've talked about this. Men in Black. We even talked about how bad of a cop he was in Men in Black. He's such a bad cop. What the fuck does he think is going to happen if you grab the mic and yell at everyone in the bar that you're looking for the head of the triads? He's like, triads, we invented the gangs in LA. I was like, come on, bro. (laughs) He's such a bad... Like, well, Bernie, he's just... It, it really, it really doesn't make any sense that he's yeah, actually it makes a no cop. sense. It just doesn't. It, make honestly, any sense. it's at this point, it's almost like he's autistic. <laughs> the way he, the way he moves, real. The it's, way he moves, it's like I would literally put him on the spectrum. Right. Like I'm not even being a dick. I'm just like at some point, <laughs> like the decorum, the even just the the the, the ability to, to read the room. Re- yes, is not there. Look, first of all, he's in a different country. He doesn't speak the language. It's not like he knows what's going on. He doesn't yep. understand anything. He just starts yep. yelling in the mic. It's He's a horrible cop. Horrible cop, but he's amazing like, scene. Where's Ricky Tan? Get Ricky Tan out here. Let's go. <laughs> Next scene. Which, Next. So that scene leads right into the cla- a classic Jackie Chan Hong Kong chase scene. Yep. Which if you're a big Jackie Chan fan, you've been watching his Hong Kong movies. This is like straight out of there. Like do the whole climbing bamboo thing. I like the joke where like a lot of physical comedy here, which is classic Jackie Chan. And then, you know, like when Chris Tucker's about to climb up and some dude just falls in front of the camera. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's just it's beautiful. great. Chris Tucker does the same thing. You know, he runs, a, he runs uh, up the stairs instead. And uh, it's just a good scene. Bamboo. Yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, rid- great scene, right? But it is unheard of. It's the mo- It's the stupidest move you can possibly do. You're running away from a cop in like the most populated city in the world, right? And you choose to climb up a bamboo structure? Can't yeah. you just spread out and run in different directions? It. Yes, it's nice. And of course, we need a scene where you're going to fight up there and um, Jackie Chan is going to do his physical comedy, action comedy, whatever. But... I just watching the movie, I was like, these people are actually stupid. Their plan is to climb up a bamboo structure. There's literally yeah, a million it, people here. It, it seemed just like they run like, away. They had an idea of like a fight in a bamboo structure. Exactly. And just like, fuck it, we gotta do it. Because nope. otherwise you would you could have just had them like run into an alleyway. Exactly. I mean, there was no way up. The wind, no way to go, but up. I mean, that takes two seconds to do. Exactly. I just thought of it 30 seconds ago. That's what I'm saying. I mean, the, I mean it was they, like they, the only they, building, and there's like five streets. Yeah, and they choose like to climb up. Yeah. It's, like they're, they're there and they were climbing up quick. Like, <laughs> Spider Man quick. I mean, I was like, Whoo. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, uh, but you're right. The the fighting on that bamboo was fantastic. Jackie Chan is so good at it. It's, he's so mm-hmm. good at it. Like even like I was watching the when you're watching it and he does like the silly moves of like kicking people and tying them up to the bamboo tree yep. and like um the the st- bamboo structure and everything. Mm-hmm. He's so good at that kind like of interacting action. with the people in the in the apartment. Yes, apologizing, in saying sorry, saying hello, all of these things. He's really really good at it. Yeah, next scene. So this goes right into the massage parlor scene. So this this is like this is the the heat of the movie. But, but really before mean- you continue, before you continue, I need to just make sure that everyone knows. If you're watching this movie, I just want you to pay attention because literally for the first like three days of uh, Lee's and Carter's in the movie, there is no sleeping. They do not sleep for a single second until they get onto the plane flying back to L.A. If you watch the movie again and it blows my mind because in the intro to the scene that you're about to say, they have the dirty suits and they're like saying, oh, my goodness, I just got hurt from falling down. Right. But yeah. I just want to let you know, it is a ridiculous uh, thing to uh, to just notice that these dudes just don't sleep. They just don't need sleep. But yeah, intro to the scene. They go to the massage parlor. 
Chris Rock is on, de- I mean, not Chris Rock, Chris Tucker. <laughs> Carter is on demon time from the jump. I mean, he's literally trying to, he's trying to sexually harass the fucking <laughs> woman <laughs> at the front. He's like, <laughs> I mean, at some point, I think autism's on the table. I think so. <laughs> He's like trying to grab her head. <laughs> she like pulls away. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on here? Uh, like it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. He's like picking women out of the group. The only that's good acting though, because Chris Tucker really looks like he's about to pick five women out there. He's like licking his lips. He's like looking at them. Um He's acting. going in. He's Jack a Chan's monster. getting. I mean, Lee's getting annoyed, but he's like, "You don't jump in front of a black man in a buffet line." Amazing uh, line. Amazing yep. line. They finally meet Ricky Tan. Yeah, and he's like, "That's a midget in the bathroom," <laughs> which is a great line. And this is probably the best fight of the movie. Oh yeah, <clears throat> in robes. They do a lot of like tag team action. The and physical they, comedy. They, the physical comedy. The Jack Chan does the classic backflips and jumps around. And then they they, they they finish with the handshake fucking thing. And then, the, which is the best part is they finish and they lose. Yeah. Which is sick. Yeah. It's, it, it is, it's a great way to end that scene. Um, I love everything about the scene. It is such, such a good scene. Um, it is wild the way he goes about picking Wilbur, right? And Lee's like, what are you doing? You, you, you're being fucking ridiculous. He's <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's being so ridiculous you can tell this dude has no friends in, in home real no bro friends. my favorite thing is when um they switch from the picking scene to them getting massages he's like america he literally talks to them like they're fucking seven years old and it it it'll never not be hilarious because he his vision of Chinese people was clearly like, like I don't know, I don't even know, like maybe yeah. like like they they live in the nineteen tens or some shit because he's, he's just like America. <laughs> you want to come to America? Amer- can you say America? And then um, you have to speak about the way he goes about uh, uh, getting Ricky Tang's attention. He's it's like you Americans are so funny, and you Asians got a hard time hearing. And he and breaks he grabs the- a laptop. <laughs> Bro, this is not being a police officer. You're, you're... He's like, you're coming with me. I don't think you heard me. Slams the laptop down. When he sees how deep Ricky's rolling, bro, he gets mad at Jackie, grabs him, he's like, you didn't tell me he's rolling like this. I mean, the whole scene is amazing. It's it's a really great scene. And I have to say, just to um, double up on what you said, um, that handshake thing where they do after they're kicking each other's ass is fantastic. And um, also compared to like uh, bad boys when the, when the partners are in trouble and they act like they're yelling at each other, but they're actually talking about what's going to happen next. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I just, I love that. It- I, I always think what, what do the henchmen think is going on when they're, when they're like nodding their head and, and exactly. talking to each other like that. They're just waiting to get punched in the face. That's exactly confused. what they're doing. Exactly. Um, also I wrote down, is anyone better at fighting with random shit than Jackie Chan? Cause I don't think so. Like John Wick does it, but he's he like he like pick up a pencil and then kill like six people with it. But it, it doesn't feel random. It feels no. like he walked into a room, picked a weapon, and fought someone. Jackie Chan, it feels like his foot got stuck in a trash can, and then he proceeds to beat six people with it. Well, the trash can flies off. Then he falls on an ottoman. Then he'll just throw the ottoman back and knock someone else out. I mean, it, it feels completely random, even though you know everything's practiced and rehearsed. Of course. But um, I think he's the goat at that shit. You know what? You know what? Jason Bourne in uh, Bourne, Bourne Supremacy, he's fi- when he's fighting that... He, I mean, actually, in all the Bourne movies, he literally just picks random shit up. Like, he fights someone with a newspaper one time. Oh, shit. Um, in, uh, in Berlin Supremacy, he's just like... He's fine. He goes to a house, and then they're like, ambush him and he just picks up a newspaper and starts fucking swatting people with it. So I think Bourne's number two. Yeah, I mean I, I, I could agree, but I don't think it's even close. Yeah, he might be number two, but I think there's a huge yeah, I there's, think a huge, so there's a huge gap in between. And Jackie's just fantastic with it. He's just fantastic <laughs> about it. Um, so then we get to the slowest part of the movie. Yeah, it's. I was about to say that. It really does go um, very slow. It feels movie. like this scene feels like they kill off Chris Tucker for the you no, you 
No, like detective you. No, you. No, wait, who's dead? You? No, detective you. It feels like it feels like they they spent ten minutes setting up that shit joke. Is what it feels like. And they had because, to figure out a way to use that. Because it makes no sense. Yeah, but I, I was gonna say that they killed Chris Tucker off just so they because they bought the rights to using P Diddy's "Missing You" and they had to use that in the movie. Yeah. But <laughs> but um, I did like. He didn't even have to pay me to use that song in a movie, bro. Stop! Get the fuck out of here. That's you know where that song videos. belongs to. Ooh. Like if you put that in a Medea movie, oh, it's right in. Yeah. You know. It so you say you did right not in. like the movie pl- that's uh, missing. Uh, it missing just doesn't you. fit. I guess it doesn't. But if you believe that that Lee thinks that um, uh, Carter died, then it does fit. It does fit. It's it's a P. Diddy and he's listening to it and he's doing the head shaking dance from the Rush Hour one. I feel like it fits. It's not. It doesn't fit well, and I don't like it being in the movie. That's why I said, I think they killed him off just because they bought the rights to that movie. That's what I think. I think they had to force that song in there. But I think if you believe it, it makes sense, right? I don't think it's a good fit. I don't think they should have done it. But the way they did it, I'll take it. I like the song, and yeah. But I agree with you. This is the slowest part of the movie. I I just yeah. definitely the slowest part of the movie. Um, but it quickly picks up because mm-hmm. uh, Carter, for some reason, back on his autistic streak, decides to, when he gets on the bad guy's yacht, decides to tell everyone, not to blend in like a regular undercover guy would, decides to tell everyone that he is the owner of that yacht. <laughs> and when she asked him, what's the name of the yacht? He says, it's the SS Minnow Johnson. <laughs> As far as fucking made up names go, that is amazing. Yeah. Honestly. Amazing. Uh, but, but I also have to say, and this is on the part of the triads, there's no fucking way. This is the third time you're seeing Chris Tucker. He's not getting let on the boat. He's not <laughs> getting let on the boat. The, the way they the way they glossed that shit over. <laughs> right. It's like I mean, the first thing you think of is how did he get on the boat? They show they show Jackie Chan having to get a styrofoam ice cooler and fucking ninja warrior his yeah. way across a road. Fucking Navy SEAL his way Meanwhile, onto the yacht. Meanwhile, Chris Tucker is a black dude wearing a Chinese shirt, <laughs> just waltzes his way onto the boat. I mean, there's He has no... to hide from one person. Exactly. And it's barely hiding. He sees this... them and turns around. That's not hiding, Mulberry. <laughs> at this point, there's 26 black people in Hong Kong. There's yeah. no way you don't recognize There's no Chris way. Tucker. There's no way you don't recognize the fact that he's on the... I mean, he said it himself. There's no way he could fit it. There's just no way he could fit it. He's two feet taller than everybody. Um, <clears throat> but you're right. This entire movie, uh, Chris Tucker, uh, James Carter, he's just... But you have to understand also, he's thinking about this as his vacation. So yes, he is chasing tail the entire time, but that's what he gets distracted by every every single time, every yeah. single time, every single time. The way he tries to pick up the chick, I mean, there's, there's no, I mean, his way of picking up a lady at one of these fancy boat yard parties is lying to his, lying to her face with the biggest lie that he owes the boat. And his request to her is, I can see us in a bathroom downstairs. Yeah, like you own the boat. Why'd you go to a bedroom? Bro? <laughs> it's like I knew it didn't work when my keys were. It was like get the fuck out of here. Your keys, bro. I'm like, <laughs> come on, man. Hilarious. Um, but um, d- so tell me, I don't know. This, you're right. This scene, like, I don't know. I feel like it's one of the slower action scenes when they do start to get. I mean, it's not even that much action. It's after uh, Ricky Tan gets shot, right? Yeah. The back of the boat. Which, well, I, I guess we can spoil it now because he comes back. Yep. At the point in time, it seems like a big deal that he gets shot. But yep. it doesn't feel like a big deal because there's no like other bad guy yet. Exactly. So you shoot him, but there's, they haven't set anyone else up to be a bad guy. You've seen the, the Asian woman. Yep. Who's fine in this movie, by the way. She really is. Um, pulls off a lot of good suits. She's mm-hmm. probably the best dressed person in the movie, and it's not close. No, um, I like I like Chris Tucker's uh, no, like cro- crocodile don't say, suit don't at the say end. That. Don't say that. <laughs> I do. Oh, I'm not gonna lie God. to you. <laughs> don't say that, sort of. Um, but no, no, I think she is the best dressed. I just don't. Yeah, I don't know. She's not. She's like. You know, um, the, the blonde-haired dude in Rush Hour 1 was such a better henchman, though. 
Yeah. I liked him yeah. so, so much, much better, better as a henchman. I really did. Um, she was decent. She was good. She really was. But she Kistak was trying to fuck her until she was dead. Literally, literally. kept on trying literally. to hook up with her until she literally took an axe to the face. Yeah. I mean, he even even gave her then a... he was yeah. still like, he's like, we could have been good together. I'm like, come on, come on man, come on, man. Um, but yeah. Um, next scene, next scene, next scene. All right. So skip all the way there in L.A. The Kung Fu Kenny scene. Wait, 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 wait. I skipped um, the whole Snoopy mom thing. Yeah. Because okay. that right now, watching it back, it's like, are these guys grown men? <laughs> you know, if they were 15 and 14 and looking through a telescope at a, at a woman taking off her skirt, then it'd be like, they should be making those noises, maybe. Yeah. But the fact that they're 40 the, fucking five years old and they're being like, I love Snoopy. Yeah. No. Let me see. It, Lil, it let does, me see. <laughs> it, 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 it's, uh, it's not a good, it's just not a good scene. It's just not a good scene. But um, I don't know if we, I'll talk about this when we talk about quotes. I really enjoyed the plane ride over. Um, but go ahead. You skipped all of the LA stuff. Go ahead. Um, so there they go to the, they think it's a bomb. Yep. They run to the roof. Chris Tucker just like throw it onto the sidewalk, which makes no sense. It's like, let's like, kill random people. <laughs> like, if it blows up up there, it kills them too. That's it. If they throw it into the sidewalk, it will probably kill like a hundred people, and they're like, just throw it. Uh, don't worry, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a worse cop we're ever supposed to move for. <laughs> Chris Tucker. I mean, really. I, I mean, honestly, he's literally risking lives of. The people you're supposed to save, man. This dude is just the worst. He's just the worst. Um, okay, yeah, all right. Um, so skip all that. For some reason, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna remind you because we have to spend some time shitting on the the Secret Service in this movie. Oh, 100 percent But when she they're useless, she, absolutely useless. She shows her tiny badge. I honestly, I I can't. There's that scene in Bad Boys where he's like, badges? I got badges? And they just shows him like 50 badges. Because there's no way like that's standard issue, tiny, tiny badges for bras. There's yeah. no way that Secret Service is like, yeah, we're giving out bra badges for the, of for the of agents. What is that? Why even show a badge? Exactly. You could just say it. You, showing the badge is ridiculous. I mean, it's just another boob shot there that you uh, um, that, that you can get into the movie. Um, but you're right. You don't have to say it because if you just explain the situation to both Carter and um, Lee, they will believe you. Um, but the showing the badge was just bullshit. It's absolutely bullshit. Only, honestly, the best part of the whole solving the mystery part is the burning of the, 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 the C notes that turn red. Yeah. Whoever thought of that needs a race because that's probably the best, probably the best filming mechanic of the whole movie because then you get to see Chris Tucker burning some shit red yeah. later on. And he's like, he gets to act like a cop and he's like, whoo, yeah, that's fake as shit, huh? Fake as and, shit. I mean, that's like, it pays off. It really and, does. Um, so you're talking about the Cheeto scene. They go into, the, they get the interrogation after. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, so they set that up at the roof and then. But can I ask you? The Americans wanted the oils from the Iraqis or Iran, whichever country they said. Um, you, why would America gift another country a dollar printing press? Yeah, it makes right. Sense. Like it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, that's the most ridiculous. But if there was anyone they wanted to gift it to, it would. It would be. <laughs> like, I will say that. I mean, like, but, but for real, like it. It's it. It doesn't make any any sense. Any sense. At all, at all. You don't gift another country a printing press to the money of your country. How is that useful? How is that a gift? I assume. I honestly, if they if they did that, it would be under the assumption that they it's just for show and they could never ever fucking print it. Well, yeah. also, why would you need to print money when you can just make oil? It's literally so, worth more than money. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. It depends. But I just think it's the most ridiculous. It's the most ridiculous thing. Um, but keep going. Yes. So they go to interrogate him. Um, keep going. So this is Don Cheadle. So this movie, it almost that it almost feels like a Netflix movie, and that there's two famous people, and that everyone else seems like they 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 you had like a million dollars left in the budget, 
you know when you when you when you play fast football auction draft and you, you, you just you get Christian McCaffrey and then you, you get you get fucking two eighty dollar players and then you have no money left and then you have to just run out your roster with one dollar two dollar players. Yeah. That's what this movie feels like. Yeah, exactly. And then Don Cheadle shows up towards the end and it only feels like it's Don Cheadle now because now he's Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. Yeah. But back then he wasn't Don Cheadle. Exactly. Right. I mean, maybe he was in traffic, and he was in um, some. And he was in that Paul Thomas Anderson movie, but he 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 was not Don Cheadle like the way he is now. Yeah. So it feels like one of those Netflix movies you watch, where it's like Chris Hemsworth and then a bunch of unknown motherfuckers, mm-hmm. and he's just beating people up because that's what it feels like. Hundred percent. This movie could have used someone with a little bit of uh, cash, eh? Cache, even as a bad guy, even as the the British bad guy. Yeah. No, bro. you get you yeah. get you get uh some random dude that you don't even pay attention to. I mean, like, ah, yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. hundred percent. Anyone, dude. You get anyone, and it just it, immediately this movie becomes a bit better because then you start to suspect. You know, you start to respect Ricky Tan a bit more. You start to respect the other guy. A little bit um, more. But uh, and they yeah, made so, so much money, and Rush Hour was such a good movie. I don't know why yeah. they didn't like they could have. No, you're right, you're right. They, they 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 fucked up with that because I just had no respect for the bad guys in this movie. I really did it like zero zilch, nada, nothing. There was no second guessing any of it. Um, but that Don Shield scene, I, I I enjoy that scene. I think it's hilarious. I the way the way he walks into that scene, the that place, uh, the Chinese place where they doing the, the the gambling in the back room. It's the same exact way he walked into the the the, the place when they went in Rush Hour One. Just guns blazing. I mean, it's the same thing he does everywhere yep. he goes. It's and literally the same thing a, he does. Immediately, like the best actor in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he, he has one good line. Still got my lunch money from the third grade. Beautiful line. Great um, line. Great line. I actually want to use the, that. Yes. Um, and they actually do. A, this is the one bit of police work. Yep. But it's one of those classic things where they can't even show the police work because they get to the tower. First off, he parts his car in front of the building on a busy street. Like it's a, like this is a commercial district. He just parks it right in front of the building. They walk in. And the guy they're trying to find is literally the is guy the working reception. Come on. Yeah. And like, he, is this real? And he sprints through the hallway, goes around the corner, and it's it's a, the drug buy happening or whatever the fuck. At bad the guy exact means. time. And the At- bad guys for a multi-billion dollar criminal conspiracy are meeting in the in the loading dock. Of of the main character's main building with his name on it. Let me just say that again. The bad guys for a criminal conspiracy, which the which the Secret Service is trying to find, is meeting in the loading dock of the bad guy's building. It'd be like if Trump was having meetings in his loading dock and they were just moving weight back there, like moving millions of pounds of cocaine. Like uh-huh. what, what what's going on there? Yeah. Um in Trump's case, it would be like fake, uh, what's it called? The, the fake uh, voting machines or whatever. Yeah. But um, you're right. It's just they had they put no effort in the bad guys at all. You're telling mm-hmm. me the guy yeah. you're looking for is working reception. The same dude who dropped $50,000 of the fake money is working reception? The, the first movie, it was a ransom. They did ransom drops. There was a little bit of thinking going on. Yeah. Um, and... This one is literally just like everything has to be within running distance or following distance. Yeah. And everything just seems to be around a lot. Chris Tucker shows up at the massage parlor. Ricky Tan is back there again for some reason. After he bought a chicken, right? Like he sees Ricky Tan after buying a chicken. Like it, it, And just follows of, him. Yeah. And then Ricky Tan, for some reason, the amount of time it takes for him to get from that place to the yacht, it's turned nighttime. Jackie Chan's already cried it out. Is driving around and then it gets a call that Rick Tan's having a party and just shows up. I mean, what is going on here? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's there's no logic to any of the any of what's happening. You're right. You're right. The bad guys say that they just let's keep him alive and then brings him to where the, <laughs> the plates are. You have no. You no 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 no. That's Isabella coming through. All right. 
That's Isabella coming through. That was all Isabella. That it, um, I hate. I, I was about to say that Asian chick. What's she should name? also have been someone more famous, to be honest. Yeah, if Zia? it's if it's Rodriguez, if, if it's Rodriguez from <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez from Fast and Furious, <laughs> now we're cooking. That would yes, yes. Now we're Speaking about Avatar from last week, uh, the last our last episode. Um, who Lee, who Lee as Zia Zhang? Um, she was about to kill him. She was about to kill him. So yeah. that was Isabella coming through. All right, that. I, that one aspect, I do believe, and the they fact did that have she that couldn't, little... yeah, the fact that she couldn't speak English, I think, really hurt her as a bad guy villain because it, you really don't know. Like she, all right, she kills um, Ricky Tan, yeah, kills. but you don't know why. Yep, you, they just say, you know, like my enemies are working against me. That's all Ricky says, but we haven't been introduced to anyone else. So, uh, what's going on here? The um, one other bit of police work that happens and the probably the best line from the movie and any aspiring police officers that are watching this movie and say i want to i want to be just like them the one thing you need to re- learn from agent carter <laughs> follow the rich white man bro that's it that's all yes, you need to know yes yes follow yes the rich white man. i'm telling you i'm telling you that 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 plane ride over to la is a great scene i love that scene yeah. but um that is probably the uh, uh, the best uh, cop work ever. But just disclaimer to everyone on the planet: don't learn anything from James Carter as a cop. This- oh, you know what would have been sick? What if the bad guy was Paul Giamatti? <laughs> yeah, he's so back in the Paul Giamatti shit. <laughs> Dude, Paul Giamatti makes every movie better. If that bad guy was Paul Giamatti, the the casino owner. Ooh, that would be heat. Ladies and gentlemen, please do me a favor. If you have seen any other millennial classic, the first six that we did, Mabari tried to get Paul Giamatti in every movie, in every he movie, deserves it. He every deserves remake. It. He um, deserves it. But I, I, I can't disagree. I think anyone like a little bit more famous would have been better as a bad guy in this movie in Rush Hour Two. Everybody, everybody. Um. So tell me, where do you where do you say the end of this scene is? Uh, like once they get kidnapped into the yeah, truck? they get hit in the back. My next good scene is uh, in they get to Las Vegas. They see the red. I mean, they pop out and they see the red. red. Be, before you continue, that the reason I was asking is before you continue, I do like the little um disagreement fight that they have in the truck i think just chris tucker is just magic on screen like the way he's like upset and he's like how are they gonna kill me and then jackie's like they're gonna cut off your egg roll and he's like fuck it we gotta keep trying don't give up right and then when jackie chain is doing all of the work of breaking them out he's like bite that thing bite that thing bro it, he's he's magic on screen he's hilarious might be the worst cop ever but he's absolutely hilarious i do like that little back and forth when they're in the back of the truck and then he pockets the money. He's like, this is for evidence. Yeah, yeah. it's for evidence. It's yeah, work. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, but go ahead. So the next Dude, can you imagine if, <laughs> if he was at like if Chris Ducker, if that cop was like at like, anything like like important, like the Marathon bombing or like the Uzvalde fucking school shooting, could you imagine? I mean, nothing would happen. He'd probably shoot a kid, to be honest. Murray, Jesus. I mean, yes, yes, he probably would. I'm telling you, he is the worst cop. No, you know what he would do? He'd start hitting on the parents, the hot moms. <laughs> that's, that's what he would do. I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm, so I'm sorry. here for you. Lost, and the shooter is still in there. <laughs> stop, stop. Okay, um, so they get to the Red Dragon. Um, The Jeremy Piven team. Yeah. Hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, and then that's that. that Bro, that's a perfect um, action comedy scene. Yeah. That's a perfect, like a real quick, beautiful action comedy scene. Yeah. Um, we got to talk about, I honestly think early 2000s mm-hmm. is the worst fashion period in America. And this scene shows that. Are you talking about my suit? Your suit, Jackie suit, is like, <laughs> what am I looking at? What is that wait, pattern? Wait. It's cut weird. The colors <clears throat> are insane. Chris Tucker's suit is like, all right, yo, what animal is that? It's obviously it, uh, it alligator. Looks bad. It has to it be alligator, It looks bad. Right? It, doesn't, it doesn't look like it fits well. It looks uncomfortable. It looks so hot. 
to be wearing that suit in Vegas. Besides the fact that in this at this time period, the NBA draft had probably the worst suits <laughs> at this point in time. Allen Iverson, baby. <laughs> um, Everyone's no. suits were literally like literally Three like times. drapes. Yep, exactly. Yep. Uh, yep. I just think that this is the worst part. And you know, 90s had their own style. You know, if you're watching in the 90s movies, where there was like those black leather hats and the fucking leather was killing it. We 80s, talked, they had we, we talked about style. fashion. We talked about the fashion of, of in Men in Black. You think the, the fashion in this movie or Men in Black is worse? Because you went better. in. What'd you say? Men in Black's better. Well, no, Men in Black I, is better Black, after he Men, gets the suit. Not before he gets the suit. When before he gets the suit, I mean, he doesn't look like a cop, but he, that's a fashion choice he's making. Chris Tucker in this one. And this is not a fashion choice. I mean, <laughs> it's fashion suicide. This is just not good, huh? Um, mm-hmm. But yes, uh, uh, I, I do, I do, I do enjoy that passion scene, though. Um, okay, keep going. People keep going. now dress like Will Smith in Men in Black. Like if you go out now, people are dressing up like Will Smith in Men in Black. No one's ever gonna wear that uh, Chris Tucker suit. No one's ever gonna wear that Chris Tucker suit. Yeah. Just wait till you see me at the baby shower. You'll see. <laughs> Um, keep going, keep going. Uh, all right, the whole red dragon. Uh, yep. This is just the last scene, exactly. Um, Chris Tucker, this is Chris Tucker's. This is like what you pay Chris. This is Chef Curry with the pot. Chef Curry is cooking. Chris Tucker, as soon as you hear, I'm gonna be a distraction. That's uh, that's Chris Tucker music. I mean, the only person better at this in a movie is Eddie Murphy. Literally, the only person better at this in a movie is Eddie Murphy. Oh, um, I think it's a close call, bro. No, I love actually, I, if you go back and I, watch all those Eddie Murphy movies, Beverly Hills Cop, um, Trading Places, 48 Hours, um, uh, all of this is, just, this is, you're right. Chris Tucker is probably getting all of his inspiration from Eddie Murphy yeah. in those movies. He's pretty much doing Eddie Murphy. Yeah, no, no, you're right. He's, he's doing a Eddie Murphy in this movie. No, you're right. You're right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But God damn it, you're right. He's so good. He's so good. So good. I literally have in my notes, this is the only time you want Chris Tucker on your squad mm-hmm. as a cop, as a distraction. Mm-hmm. That's the no, only, that's, bro, that's the only thing he's good at. I mean, let's like, be real, though. He would get kicked out of the thing so quick. No, not if you're dropping $100,000. Let's you, be real. You, you, you'd be able to yell all that shit? 100%. If you, especially, especially nowadays, if you bring up the race thing, they're going to hear you out. They'll give you a few He's minutes. like 362 years of slavery for $500 chips. <laughs> And then every time they come back to him, he's saying something even more ridiculous. This is for the 28 years Mandela spent in prison. <laughs> Boom. And you're just like, what the fuck is this dude talking about? Bro, that's the greatest line. 362 years for $500 chips. And um, then he's it's, like, it's oh, beautiful. Yeah. Lionel Richie ain't been black since the Commodores. <laughs> Great line. It's um. Yeah, um, he's just spitting fire in every one of these scenes. And he ends up with a cowboy hat, even like the quick scene where he's mm-hmm. like, who's touching my ass? Do it again. I'm like, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yes, Chris Tucker. <laughs> yes, James Carter. Do your fucking shit. Um, he gets on the table. He starts dancing. You can't, during this um, Red Dragon scene, you can't look away when Chris Tucker's on the screen. Mm-hmm. You just cannot. He's so, so, so good. Um, how do you like the ending ending? Like when shit starts to blow up. So the sneak to the vault makes no sense. Yeah, I no. mean, it, uh, it makes no sense. I feel like he, he'd be able to get in, but everything after him, like getting distracted so he can chase it. Yeah. I mean, they, the thing is, though, the thing is, as good as uh, uh, Jackie is, that scene where he slides through that little hole is so impressive. Even the, like when they show like the the outtakes, it, the outtakes eh, I mean, Mumbury, that's truly impressive because that's like a legitimately sized thing that they would have at a casino. That is truly, truly impressive. Yeah, you know that from experience or regulation? It's regulation. I'm saying it looks it. I'm saying it looks it. It is very <laughs> believable. It's very believable. But um, nah, they do. They have that thing where it's like it goes underneath. You remember? 
you, they don't oh, have yeah, anywhere you can the, reach through. The, yeah, the the metal. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. But I'm saying it looks so believable that I questioned it. Um, it, it's just yeah, no, there's no the way. Grenade in the mouth scene, great visual comedy. Then you have that thing of like, it's like it almost feels like you're watching a cartoon. The amount of times that Jackie Chan, instead of just running up to the thing and putting his foot and grabbing it like a regular human being, he just dives two dives. feet short. Come on, like man. every time, Come just on, two man. feet short, and then yeah. he gets kicked over. And you're just like, all right, this is slapstick at this point. Exactly. The because first like, two times, because every other time. Every other time, Jackie Chan is like super precise with all of these weird items that he's using to fight people with. But when he needs to catch the trigger for the bomb that's in his mouth, he jumps two feet short. Wrap it up. I mean, that's bullshit. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense. Stop. It doesn't make any you sense. Lick the goddamn tape and rip it <laughs> off, bro. Come on. I always feel like when I whenever I see people fucking with tape around their mouth, I'm like, dude, lick it. Come on. <laughs> Like it. When I see like a serial killer has like a woman trapped in the basement with tape around the mouth, I'm always like, Stop. lick Stop. Stop. Get that saliva out and lick it because you can get out of that. I believe in you. I Mom, believe in you. Mom, Murray, I, I promise you, I don't think you understand how tough. Well, he had like the like the the, the clear tape, but like in the That's other movie tape, we can keep that. We can get that. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying like like real like the other types of tape that people use is usually duct tape, and there's no fucking licking duct tape through. That's not happening. That's not happening. But in this in this scene, yeah, I think he probably could have ripped out of that shit. He probably could have. He probably could have. Um, wait, before we go any further, what did you think? Do you remember how you what you thought when you saw Ricky Tang? Was alive. Like we, how surprised? I forgot. I completely forgot. He That's what I'm saying, bro. I it's really. Fun. And it means nothing. Exactly. In the first exactly. movie, exactly. The reveal for Jun Tao. Bang. Exactly. I mean, Jun Tao. Oh shit! Oh shit, bro! It fucking hit when when Ricky Tan came back. I was like, "That's cat." Yeah. That's bullshit. Exactly. You you you. They probably bullshit. shouldn't have faked the death. I mean, like it just. I don't know, because the white guy, the other dude in the team, he was just so useless in this movie, right? Mm -hmm. the, so, like, I, I don't think they should have faked his death. You could have just had Ricky Tang orchestrating so, it all. The white guy doesn't have his own security. He's a billionaire. He runs a casino. He just rolls by himself. <laughs> and then when he meets the, 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 the other mastermind to his plan, who we know runs 20 deep, and he steals his most valuable possessions... And then looks him in the eye and say, I think I'll be taking these. And then all he does is flash a tiny ass pistol in the chest and goes, and you won't do anything about it. It's like, who are you talking to? Exactly. Talk? This motherfucker runs the truck, guys, bro. You're a casino owner. You've probably buried like fucking 50 people. You have dudes. You have goons. Why are you up here alone stealing shit, bro? It's ridiculous. It's you ridiculous. You deserve to die in that moment. I don't yeah. feel bad. Um, I... I Ditto. Agreed. I didn't feel bad. And I was like, good. You have to just get him out the way. Not good, but like good. Because like, get out. He's clearly not going to fight Ricky Tan. If Ricky Tan was like, no, I'll fight you right now. What was the guy going to do? He looked like he didn't, hadn't been on a rowing machine in fucking yeah. 10 years, bro. He, bro, he wouldn't have <laughs> shot Ricky Tang if Ricky Tang was like, shoot me. He wouldn't yeah. have done anything. He, he was just he was just like a prop in the movie. He wasn't even a character. Um, But yeah, I just wanted to get that out the way because he just... He is my LVP of the movie. I thought he was yeah. useless. He had like three lines. If that was Sean Connery, thanks. Exactly. That's you're it right. Really hits. I think like the, the best thing you've said this entire podcast is the fact that they should have used more money for the bad guys. Because I, I'm like, I'm thinking this movie over. If they gave some cat, like if they gave some credit to the bad guys, this movie would be so much better. It'd be so I much mean, more. If, if you have to, if you think about anything in this movie that the bad guys do for more than 10 seconds, it makes <laughs> no sense. Exactly. Like why kill Ricky Tan? It doesn't remove any heat off him. He's still alive three days later. Yeah. It's like you kill him to shock Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan's the only person on earth who, who cares gives a shit. <laughs> for real. For real. The like Secret Service, for some reason, <laughs> it, this is a billion dollar operation. This is the most, probably, honestly, the most pressing thing that Secret Service has to do. They got two motherfuckers working on a case. Yeah. One boss who has no clue what's going on. At all. And their main priority is keeping these two cops 
who keep on finding clues out of the way. They, they actively spend time bringing these cops along, stringing them along, keeping them alive, bringing them places, places. And they just do nothing for themselves. Nothing. They know the plates are in that Vegas thing. Raid yeah. that shit. Bro. Exactly. Come on, I've man. I've seen them fucking in succession raid the fucking building and they have like a thousand agents. Yeah. Well, <laughs> for real? raid the casino. <laughs> make sure no one leaves and get there until you get the plates. And then it's done. What are we doing here, bro? Yeah, um, the bad guys. Just the, the logistics of this movie is absolutely ridiculous. You know, but, you know how in Bad Boys Two, okay, they, um, Gabrielle Union is is working for the DEA, and they kind of cross into their the DEA investigation. But then at some point they get brought in, and then you see the DEA while well, she's still undercover, right? But the uh, yeah. But do you see that they have like surveillance? They got like the truck full of computers. They know what's they, going on. You can on. see that they have an investigation. They like, even if they had in... done that. Yeah. If they had done that, and you see that there's like a legit investigation. I mean, otherwise the secret service just shows up after the fact. Like, uh, you ruined two years of police work. Da, 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 da. It's like, what police work? Exactly. What have you guys been doing? And you guys haven't done shit to like prove this police work. And the fact that you brought up Bad Boys 2 reminded me of Fast and the Furious 2. And even in Fast and the Furious 2, with Tyrese Gibson, the police mm-hmm. are doing better work than this mm-hmm. fucking movie. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Just the cops are just the CIA. Meanwhile, they have all the information, by the way, because they exactly. have an undercover agent. So they in know the- Ricky Tan. They know the other guys involved. They know all this shit. What what are we waiting for? What here? are you waiting for? I mean, you literally Grand have open? everything you need. What are they <laughs> waiting for? The fact that I don't know the, the fact that Ricky Tang was the only thing I wanted more. I know that the death of Ricky Tang was super quick. I love the Chris Tucker being like, "Shoot him! He deserves to kill him. It's just you and me. Shoot him! We'll tell him we fell." <laughs> like whatever uh, Chris Tucker was saying was great. I just I wanted him to be even as like like out of this world as the plot was for this movie, I wanted him to put up a bigger fight. At least like Jun Tao in Rush Hour 1 was at least climbing up the stairs and you, like, I mean, the the, the fucking white ladder mm-hmm. all the way up and he was about to get into the helicopter. In this movie, he literally gets kicked out of the building in one kick. I mean, there's mm-hmm. no pushback. There's no fight. You don't see him do anything. This is yeah, supposed to be- reasonably athletic. Yeah, he looked like decently young. He looked like he could fight. I mean, like I feel like they should have done a little bit more. But I feel like we've trashed these bad guys and these cops enough. But um, the the fight, I mean, Jackie Chan is the fighter. The fight between Chris Tucker and the chick was so much better. It was yeah. just fantastic. It was like just so much better, so much better. It almost felt like Jackie Chan choreographed it for Chris Tucker because the way like Chris Tucker was just picking shit up and using it over exactly. and over again. I was like, and even the way she died, even well, she got stabbed by accident, yeah. by accident. Yep, 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 yep. And he was still trying to fuck her, so <laughs> no <never> change. <laughs> um, uh, let's jump to the uh, so. Oh wait, uh, do you have a favorite scene? Your favorite scene? Tell me your favorite scene. Probably the massage parlor fight. Done. And it, it it honestly you need to see like him <laughs> him yelling at, 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 at Ricky Tan, Ricky Tan's goons getting up while Chris Tucker's <laughs> turned around and Ricky Tan telling him to calm down and they sit down and Ricky, Ricky turns around again. I mean it just all works. It's great. Um, <laughs> it just you you get to see everything, and uh, it's great. I love it. That transition where Chris Tucker grabs Ricky. And he's like, you better. And then he sees everyone gr- stand up and he starts to pat him down. Is a group. Yeah, let me get you a That's- new laptop. <laughs> I, I see the new ones. They got a DVD playing them now. Let me get that for you. That transition is great acting. He's like, he starts to pat him down. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good scene. It is my favorite scene. I love, love, love. Like, Everything, everything in that scene from the beginning when he walks in to pick the girls to the end when they uh, he ends up being naked in the middle of the street. I love that entire scene. I love that entire scene. Um, we both talked about our worst scenes. So let's talk about the cast. Um, I told you guys my LVP, which is um, uh, the, uh, the, the the white guy, the white bad guy, the, the rich yeah, white guy. I agree with you. Rain. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, an MVP, James Carter, Chris yeah. Tucker, 
I mean, it's mm-hmm. not even it's not even close. Jackie Chan, you get what you see, you get what you expect from Jackie Chan, but just how funny Chris Tucker is and how out of this world he is in this movie, he just because it's an action comedy and the action is good. It's not the best action you've ever seen, but the comedy is out is fantastic. It's I think is what carries this movie. It's such a good time watching this movie. Is this um, movie more or less racist than the first one? That's the real question. I I have to say more. I think Be- it's more. Yeah, it has to be more because in the first one, you get all of the Chinese jokes. It's like, you know, he doesn't speak English. He, he, he makes all these assumptions. But a lot of Chris Tucker's like wildness in the first one is just him being a bad cop, right? The, a lot of the wildness in this movie is Chris Tucker assuming shit about Asian people. <laughs> Actually, you know what? You know what? Just the fact that in the first one they say, I don't want some Chun King cop getting in the way, I think has to take the edge. The, the, the thing with this one is it's less explicit and it's more implied. I mean, the Hong Kong police get nothing right. Yeah. Nothing done. They seem incompetent from the jump. They let themselves get bombed. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. They kind of get walked over by this random sh- Secret Service guy, which would never happen. Like, Secret Service can't show up to like Italy and be like, "Yo, we're running the investigation." Exactly. They tell them to go fuck themselves. Yeah, I mean, they yeah, two people on. died. Yeah, you're in this. You get to know the information, but you can't run the fucking show. Yeah. This is not your country. Get the fuck out of here. You're right. You're right. Um. So I just get you get the sense that Chunking Cop outdoes everything else in this movie. <laughs> No, uh, let's just let's just keep it that they're both super racist. They both and this movie very, wouldn't get made now. There's no way. I mean, if it does, you gotta you gotta calm down on these ch- Chinese jokes, bro. You yeah. know, in the movie, he says, "I'll smack you back to the Ming Dynasty." Yeah, yeah. I'll smack he, you back to Bangkok. <laughs> no, Bangkok is not. <laughs> they're not even trying, bro. They're not even trying. It's it's a. Uh... It's racist at a different level, this movie. At a different, different level. Um, I think we've covered most of it. If you had um, to remake this movie now, who would you pick? Well, um, I'm just going to tell you guys right now, we're not going to be doing Rush Hour 3. I don't think Rush yeah, Hour 3 is... Do we're, we're not doing Rush Hour 3. Um, so, remake... And So, you're talking about like like just recast like who 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 we're gonna pick for this movie or are you yeah, saying like have, if you're saying like let's say like fucking rush hour the rights are back on and they're trying to pitch a new one. Oh, okay they need to get it made otherwise they'll lose it you know like those things where it's like you know sony has to make it on a spider-man otherwise they lose the rights to it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so um. pretend rush hour matters <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um. and they actually care they have to make a new one i i said daniel kaluuya and Aquafina, but now that I'm thinking about it, because I was thinking maybe you got you flip it so that the comedian is actually the Asian one, and the black person is this, kind of the straight. But then I realized Daniel Kaluuya is not really an action guy. He's so not maybe, at all. Maybe you get Denzel's son. What's his face? Uh, I know you're talking uh, about from Tenet. From um, Tenet. Um, John David he, Washington. Yes. Well, yes. John. You get him to do the action, and she is like the local guy. You know what I'm saying? What were your thoughts? Because, I, I mean, watching this movie's bamboo scene, I thought of Shang-Chi right away. I thought of Shang-Chi. You remember? You watch Shang-Chi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, what did you think about That's, Shang-Chi? Shang-Chi is the definition of mid. Mid movie. I, I guess, but, like, the Aquafina, and I, I'm sorry, but I forget the dude's name. The Aquafina and that dude, I thought they were a great pairing i know they both asian there's no black guy in that but like i thought they were such a good pairing in that movie they made sense together the the their friendship made sense the fact that like they were together i really enjoyed that companionship it's very different they got superpowers and it's not a buddy cop movie but i really like them together as he's the serious one she's the comedic you know fun part i did like that i'm not gonna lie i did i did um but if i had to remake it now and if I really was looking for like some more culture in the movie, Aquafina is a hundred percent in the movie. Like, I mean, she just is. She just is. But for the action, I don't know, Mumbury. Who is the biggest action star right now? I have to say, it's probably Keanu Reeves with John Wick. Yeah, right. 
Uh, like who's the him, who? Jason Statham? These guys are too oh. old, bro. You gotta they go wait. for younger. Yeah, you. It's have weird to. if they're hanging out with Aquafina. Who <laughs> probably? <laughs> probably, unless she's like the new recruit that they have to show around town. I don't know. The Listen, youngest you, you could probably go is like Ryan Gosling. It's probably the oldest you can go. But he Chris doesn't Evans. have the action. He doesn't have the action that I would want in an action comp. Well, have, you maybe seen, have you seen the Gray Man, the new Netflix movie? I actually have not. Is it worth watching? I was nervous about watching it. For net, for as far as Netflix action movies go, it's it's below extraction, but it's better than almost all the other ones. Okay. But if we're comparing it to real movies, like real movies you'd pay to see, you would not pay to see it. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking. I mean, like, I want a, I want an action fucking star, bro. I want an. Action, but like, in no, 2000- but the action's good. In, two, in 2022, you're right because like the extraction with Hemsworth, it's like a lot of the stuff is just he's just beating up Indians for about an hour. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe the racism would fit right on it, bro. It just the best part about that is when he's beating up the kids. Amazing. Honestly, <laughs> there needs to be more scenes where adults are beating the shit out of kids. Because some some of these movies, kids are annoying as fuck, and they oh, just they 100%. just they just skate away with it. Can I just say? Can I just say? Like I know we're talking about how racist this movie was, but you remember Rambo: The New Blood or whatever that movie is, right? The one <laughs> that set Mexicans back about three years, bro. My I mean, god, they Mexicans fucking... couldn't catch a break with that shit. No, not a fucking single second. So maybe this movie could be remade. Um. Any final thoughts, Mulberry? Because I, I think we really come. Look, I know. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I, what Mulberry said is the exact truth about this movie. We were talking about how logistically and all of this stuff that doesn't make sense, and the bad guys were silly, and all of that stuff. But it's an action comedy, right? If you think about what's going on for more than ten seconds, you might not enjoy it as much. But if you just let it play, if you enjoy it, if you are there for the comedy and the action comedy and all of these fun things, you'll have a fucking great time through this movie. Um, it is a millennial classic. It 100% yeah, it's is a millennial, a millennial classic. classic. It's a great sequel to Rush Hour. Um, it's Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. I think this is, is this Chris Tucker's peak? I think we yeah. talked about this at yeah. Rush Hour 1, but I think because mm-hmm. this movie did so this much is, better. This is when he like could hold, hold out and he was making like 20 mil a movie. And uh, this is his peak. This is why he's not in the fucking 20 movies. Exactly. He's making and, 20 mil a movie. Um, and then um, what's it called? I don't, it's, this is a really hard question, but because uh, Jackie Chan is like an international superstar. It's not Jackie Chan's peak. In America, it probably is. In America, that's what I was about to ask. In America, internationally, it's really hard to judge for Jackie Chan. No, because he's been, was it was it Police Story, Police Academy? He's been in. He's been killing it in Hong Kong at this point for like 10, 15 years, exactly. right? Exactly. And he's like at this point like global star. I mean, but, right now he's he's shilling for Big China. Yeah, but of uh, he is. <laughs> but, but, but uh, if he had America- his way, if he had his way in this movie, China would have taken over the investigation of taking it. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, but we in all America, Xiaomi phones. In in America, this is this is Jackie Chan's peak, right? Like domestically, um, like from the U.S. It's perspective. This or Shanghai Noon. No, Shanghai Noon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Get the yeah. fuck out of here! This is yeah, a it's, Jackie it's Chan the, speak in the U.S. You think of America. Jackie Chan, you think of Rush Hour. You think exactly. of Chris Tucker, you think of Rush Hour or Friday. Yep, 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 yep. Um, yep. and Friday was just you know probably his breakout, so this is probably his peak. His peak. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, any final thoughts, Mulberry? Um, no, I think you know. I think we covered it. I think we did real good is, with this one. Yeah, you know, it needed to be done. Exactly. It's it's, it's kind of like you know we have to do we'll do more Harry Potter movies because they need to be done. hundred. You know this is the part of the this is the no, part but of the part. Prisoner of Azkaban doesn't need to be done. Prisoner of Azkaban, Prisoner of Azkaban is, is the best one. Exactly. Prisoner of Azkaban is the best one, but we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We've done two Harry Potters. Have we? I think we did. No, we just did, secrets? No, I think we just did Philosopher's Stone. I don't think. Well, we gotta talk about how a snake is just rolling through the school and no one does it. it's, <laughs> rolling through, it's rolling through a school for six months, no one does jack shit. We got the most powerful wizard in the wizarding history in his arms. 
fucking 30 foot long snake rolling around. through. <laughs> and all they say at the end is they must have been going through the pipes. Pipes, motherfucker. The pipes? <laughs> this is just swallowing human beings whole. There's no pipes. Going through the pipes. Come on. Anaconda was more believable mm-hmm. than that shit. Mm-hmm. And this is a wizarding movie. Um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, listen, enjoy this movie. It's a millennial classic. It's a really, really good time. Might not be the top of the list, but it's on the goddamn list. All right. We'll catch you in a couple of weeks. Deuces. Deuces.